2EA for sponsoring this video. Hello guys, this is Svetlana from Conway Cosplay and today we are going to build a light up katana with sound effects. To be more precise, we are going to build the Karakuri Katana from Wild Hearts. In case you don't know, Wild Hearts is a brand new hunting game, playing in Azuma, a world inspired by the mystical and feudal Japan. You can choose between a different and really fun weapons to fight the kemono, which are like gigantic beasts. And uh, yeah, the Karakuri Katana is actually one of those weapons. And in addition to that, you can also use a really cool crafting technique, which is called Karakuri. And those Karakuri gadgets basically help you during the fight and also help you like to, to travel around faster and everything. I personally didn't play a lot of the game so far yet because I was super busy crafting but I cannot wait to finally check out the rest of the game. You can check out the game by clicking on the link in the video description. When the Karakuri Katana is fully charged up, it goes into the super powerful Unbound mode where it becomes like super blinky and becomes like a lightning whip. And I wanted to combine both things, the Katana and the whip. So I'm building a normal Katana, but I'm adding LEDs and sound effects and it will be awesome. So let's start crafting. So the idea was to recreate the Unbound mode and to light up the blade of the Katana. First though, we had to figure out the size and the shape of the weapon, so it was time for a blueprint. Based on some in-game screenshots, Benny opened up Adobe Illustrator and made a drawing from multiple sides. After printing it out and gluing it together, this also helped me a lot to figure out the correct length I wanted my katana to be. And while bigger is always better, I thought the 150cm long version actually would suit me the most. Then it was time to decide on the materials. Since I wanted my katana to light up, I had to decide between using LED foam or 3D printing. But then Benny was like, so this thing is going to only light up? Like, isn't that a bit boring? Why don't you add at least sound effects on top? And then I remembered this absolutely perfect tutorial I found on adafruit.com. Actually, I always was dreaming about building a light up sword that makes whoosh and cling when you move it. So obviously I had to not only install LEDs, but also add a speaker and a movement sensor. Since this would take time though, Benny would need to help me out here, so we decided to 3D print everything. To get a good battle plan, we had to do a couple of tests though. First, we printed a thin blade slice in PLA and ABS and compared the translucency of the material. ABS looked a lot better. I even had a dream about the construction and drew it on paper. So the blade would get a little railing inside to hold the LEDs and a metal piece for extra stability. If we printed this just right, we could slide in everything without any glue at all. And the test worked out perfectly. LEDs looked great as well. Okay, so now that this was decided, Benny sat down and made a complete 3D model of the sword in Blender from scratch. He basically used simple geometric shapes to block out the base first and then added the details on top. If you're interested in this process, just check out his Blender tutorials on our channel. After he was done, he hollowed out the sword just like in our test, sliced it into several smaller pieces and sent them all over to our both 3D printers. Everything was printed in 0.19mm layer high and a 2mm wall thickness in white ABS. Printing all slices took around 2 days in total. The blade alone was 7 individual slices. Maybe we should really get a larger printer soon. Anyway, now it was time to glue everything together. First, I cut my LED strip to the right length and then added plastic tape to my metal rail to stop it from being conductive. After that, I attached it to the first blade slice, slid in the LED strip and tested it all. So happy it actually worked. Next, I fixed the strip to my metal rail and then we mixed a strong two-part epoxy glue, applied it with a toothpick and attached the next piece. I repeated this process five more times and always made sure my LEDs were still working. 
The glue took around three hours to cure, so we clamped piece by piece everything together and slowly built up the whole blade this way. To fill the leftover gaps, Benny actually used a mix of acetone and leftover prints. This slushy can be easily applied, is super strong and can be sanded once dried. Benny actually spent a lot of time with sanding, but this helps a lot to get some sexy arms. Now for the electronics, I used a Feather M4 and a prop maker Featherwing from Adafruit.com. Once I prepared the circuit, this was the result. I had two switches to turn everything on and off, one speaker for the sound effects and a LiPo battery which should fit into the grip. Now our idea printers had only to finish the rest of the Karakuri Katana build. As always, this included a ton of finishing, sanding, gluing and a strong fiberglass rod for stability. The grip also included already holes for the switches. And just like a proper Chaos cosplay crafter, I slid them in and covered them with a crazy amount of hot glue. And yes, you can see it worked perfectly. Ho ho ho, super excited. In addition, the battery and the chip fit perfectly into the grip. Now Benny only had to add more glue and we could finish the grip as well. Well, and now if everything works out at the end, I only had to press one button and the blade would lit up. So cool. Okay, finally, I only had to pull the LED strip connection through the 3D print, plug it in, squeeze the circuit into the grip, apply some epoxy glue and then fusion, ha! Everything into one single blade. This little clamp here held the whole world together for us. At least this was already the hardest part and we only had to add all the leftover details on top. This piece here was the end of the katana for example. Benny made it out of several parts so he could sand it easier. The plan was to hide the speaker here and then cover it up with this resin printed element. While the whole blade was actually printed with our both FDM printers, our resin machine did a great job on the guard and all the other details. Benny also added a ton of textures and elements inspired by gears and the Karakuri gadgets from Wild Hearts. Cleaning up the prints takes also far less effort since the result comes out almost perfect out of the printer. Just a little bit of love with the sanding sponge and the print is ready to paint. We only had to slit these pieces over the blade and secure them with a good amount of epoxy glue. Look, Benny even sculpted and printed out some tiny baby rivets, which nobody will ever, ever see or notice. Wow, but now after so much of crafting, talking and showing you everything, we actually made it until the finished build of the blade. Everything worked out so far and I was super happy with the sound effects as well. So proud. Okay, now let's paint this beauty. To get the surface more smooth, Benny first applied a thin layer of white airbrush primer. Then the guard got a base layer of brown and afterwards some gold on top. The sword was actually too large for our spray booth and the outside temperature was below zero. So we had no choice but to carefully airbrush inside and cover everything in protective plastic wrap. Anyway, next the pommel got some gold and the handle some bone white. For the blade, Benny first had to mask off the little separation lines. This took quite a while. Afterwards he covered the top with a thick layer of gunmetal and added a gradient towards the sharp edge. We actually only wanted to illuminate the thin part of the blade and as you can see the effect looks pretty sweet. To make sure the katana would look super fancy even without the lights, Benny also added a pretty teal shine at the end. Just a little bit, you know? Then Benny removed the masking tape, added a few fine lines around the deepenings and finally tested the lights again. Looked very cool, don't you think? Last but not least, we sealed everything with a thin layer of satin gloss spray varnish 
and added a bit of oil color weathering on top. By the way, don't ask me how Japanese blacksmiths do the handle binding with only two hands. We barely managed to do this together. But I think the result turned out pretty fine. At the end the speaker got a nice cozy home in the pommel, love this word by the way, and got covered with a ton of hot glue. Some super glue here and there, plugged in the cable, squeezed the wire inside and perfectly mounted this part with a little magnet. One final fabric wrap around the end to close it off and the Karakuri Katana from Wild Hearts was done. I really love how this project turned out, especially with all the fancy effects. And now the sound demonstration. Benny and I added here some electric noise and sword effects and as you can see the katana even lights up when swung. So proud of this project! Thanks so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and I also really hope you enjoyed the final result of our Karakuri Katana. Benny and I are incredibly proud and yeah as always if you have any questions just leave me a comment down below as you know it was always a huge dream of mine to finally build a light up katana and i'm super happy i finally got the chance so please check out wild hearts in the link down below and if you also want to build your very own light up katana you can actually find a 3d model for a basic katana in our shop on kamoicosplay.com and in addition to that if you need some help for 3d printing or leds i also have books about that in the shop as well i'm prepared for all of your questions um and as always um yeah like and subscribe please to support us hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos also write down corgi if you have no idea what to write or if you have uh, no questions at all and join the corgi squad and support us with your interactions on youtube and yeah i'm actually going to play a little bit more wild hearts i'm super excited and so see you very soon in the next video bye bye and finally thanks so much to all our super patreons for supporting our channel and these are backslash cosplay emma ethan makes iris virus luisa paris nif and roa and also thanks so much to all our other patreons you are amazing